I told you I'm not done yet. Let's continue. I'm a warrior, bro. I'll fight you all day in the name of the Most High. I'm not scared of you. I used to be scared of you because I didn't understand what I was up against. You cannot fight your enemy without understanding your enemy first. But once a man understands his enemy, he becomes a very dangerous man, doesn't he? And yet he means no harm to you. He's lo he actually loves you. He only wants you to remember yourself. That's a battle you have to fight side by side with him. Not against him. Don't be an idiot. Is this thing that's coming at us right now? It's just like little fish, big fish. If big fish comes and spot with a little fish, and then an even bigger fish comes along and spot with that way. So, like I said before, it reached a time point where the witches were being forced to help these uh, kings and rulers and stuff, these archbishops. They were being forced to ally with them because they're all of the witch hunts, bro. These people used to hunt them in the middle of the night, bro. They would burn them at the stake and stuff. They would kill these people, these women in front of everybody. They couldn't hide in the swamps anymore. They had to, they, so what happened was, they, they, the witches introduced them to the dark side, bro. Because they have no access to the Most High's kingdom. The only place they can borrow their powers from is obviously from hell. The dark forces. These things that are literally anti-God, they are borrowing power from that. That's why I said people are stupid when they do witchcraft. They don't even know what they're doing. They're stupid. Anyway. So. These women started introducing them to that stuff. And, um. And so there you have it. They, they, uh, they're, they, they started a brotherhood. They started, um, a new version of the brotherhood. And they had to, they had to swear secrecy. And the reason why they had to swear an oath in secrecy with their allegiance with these witches it's because they were witches. They were drawing forces from the dark side, bro. <laughs> Look at the Kardashians, man. Everybody knows they're witches, but they still, they still somehow make it look like fiction and truth at the same time, bro. It's, bro, we live in, right, yo, listen. Right now, we are living in the most bizarre in craziest times in history, bro. These things were not common that we're seeing right now. This is like the worst thing imaginable. Even Babylon wasn't this bad with all this witchcraft and stuff, bro. Like, not like how you're seeing right now, bro. These people are out of control, bro. That's how you know they're demons. They are literal demons, bro. I'm not being uh, metaphorical when I say that about them. These people who actually came from hell, bro. They came from this realm and they're wearing a uh, meat skin. They're wearing the flesh of these celebrities. These celebrities are trapped in hell right now, bro. That's why they show you these, uh, these movies like Get Out. The dude was trapped in darkness, just like how I described to you, bro. They called it the sunken place. Now, when you think of a sunken place, obviously a sunken place is a fucking cave. Excuse my language. 
literally hell, bro. Your soul will be trapped and tormented in hell while they're wearing your, your flesh out in the public, bro. They're portraying themselves as you. People don't understand just how dangerous witchcraft is, man. It is so anti-God. And see, I get caught up in these things sometimes. It makes me emotional, bro. Because people really don't understand what's happening, bro. They're, they're just living their lives playing games, bro. They think everything is funny. Look, I have a, I have a, I have a, a skin disease and everything. Something like, you know what I mean? My skin will start peeling and flaking stuff because I have cellulitis, man. They laugh. Look at your face. Ha, ha, ha. They were, uh, they started picking on your shit. These people don't have a soul, bro. They know I have a, uh, this disease, bro. I've had this disease actually since I was a little boy. I have, uh... I would have like big cysts inside of my ears when I was a little boy, man. I had to, they used to take me to the doctor and shit, bro. Like I said, I was in the hospital all the time. Uh, the cellulitis that I've had right now was most likely caused by the lead poisoning from when I was a little boy. I probably ate like some paint chips or something, bro. I was so young, I didn't know what I was doing. And I end up getting lead poisoning. And I had asthma real bad too. So I was always, I've always had infection in my body. My body had a hard time fighting off these infections, bro. I had like a, uh, I had like a low immune system. I was a very sickly boy. And you, you ever watch that movie, uh, Bubble Boy? The boy had to live in a bubble all the time because he was so sick. That was how I was, man. I wasn't living in a bubble or nothing like that. But I was always in a bed sick, bro. I was always in a hospital with shit, bro. They left scars on my body that I still have right now. They kept injecting me with IVs and stuff. They put all kind of stuff in me, bro. These, all these different drugs and stuff, man. The way I see it, even the drugs that they were pumping into me probably caused me to have a whole other disease. I have cellulitis even still. So if I have like bad looking acne on my face and stuff, that is why I always had bad acne. I'm a 40 year old man and I still have an acne, acne problem. It's because of the disease that I've always had. But see, these people have been so demoralized in this current day and age, man, that they would just, like, they would start saying stuff about you that's not even true. Even though it, they probably heard it before from somebody else, they don't care anymore, bro. These demons are nasty people, bro. They would say almost anything to tear another person down, bro. But you would never see them say almost anything just to bring people up. And the reason why is because, back to the story, the witches making a coven and a pact with these knights and templars and stuff. They started forming brotherhoods and sisterhoods, bro. And they would have a dual parentship over the nations, bro. Dual parent chips, like parents, bro. They're like parents in the world right now, bro. These people are demonic, bro. These witches introduced them to the dark side. So that was how that came about. And then what happened was they had to figure out a way that they could stay in power like that. And those witches introduced them to Satan, bro. They went to Satan offering him things, man. They were sacrificing their, their firstborn kids and stuff. The witches was telling them to sacrifice their firstborn to Satan, bro. And they'll, and they'll live forever. 
some of these people were doing stuff like that, bro. That's what they started doing. And look, the people be this. I don't care. I'm not scared of you, bro. I walk in the spirit of truth. You don't want to mess with me, bro. I say these things out loud now. The Most High told me don't keep it to myself anymore, bro. I ain't got to try to adapt to these people. These people need to adapt to me. They need to adapt to the Most High. They're lost, bro. That's what I meant to say. They don't need to adapt to me. They need to adapt to the Most High. These people have these people don't have God in their life anymore. That's why they look at me crazy when they hear me talking like this. This dude was standing outside his front porch with the gate open. He was like standing there watching me just a second ago, bro. Like trying to listen to what I'm saying, this white dude, bro. I had to let him know I ain't scared to speak like this in front of you. What do you want to do? Attack me? Call the police? I'm not scared of y'all, bro. I always tell people this, man. I would never be afraid of Satan. I look Satan dead him. I look Satan dead in his face. And I dare him to swing, bro. I'm not scared. I'm not scared of you, Satan. I will actually fight you, bro. I told you the most high made me a warrior at heart, bro. I will fight you, Satan. Just like I fight your demons. They don't even attack me no more, bro. Not in the spirit realm, at least. They try to attack me here now. Because they know if they attack me here, it's easier for me to condemn myself. They're going to try to coerce me to do that. But I'm no fool. So anyway, back to what I was saying. The Knights Templars have officially have been formed. They had they were formed their allegiance with the witches, bro. They were hesitant at first. They they still hate each other even now, bro. These witches hate these men. Who did this to them? They, they, they had legacies and stuff, and they, they hate them equally, bro. Because they were, uh, they didn't know that they were getting, they didn't know they were actually drawing contracts with Satan, bro. They didn't really know at first. When they found out that what those bitches were doing to them was for real, it was no escape, bro. The blood contract has already been sealed, bro. They don't have a choice but to try to resurrect Osiris or they're going to die. They're not going to get the things that they want anymore. Their family will lose favor. They will be replaced by someone else's legacy. So they did the Princess Diana. Remember that? They weren't going to let, keep letting her say things like that, bro. They knew it was only a matter of time before she started saying what they were actually doing. These things that I'm telling you right now, actually. She was starting to talk too much. She was saying too much, bro. These people swore secrecy to, to Satan, bro. Because this was during a time where you couldn't do stuff like that out in the open too much. See, now we are living in a time period where you can't do that out in the open. You can claim, you can outright claim le uh, allegiance to Satan himself, bro. Tell people you're a Satanist, bro. And just live in the same neighborhood with them, too. And nobody will call the cops on you or anything, bro. They will actually come to your parties and stuff. Drink and do drugs with you, man. <laughs> bro, these people are out of their minds out here, bro. I am serious, man. Good afternoon. These people are out of their minds, bro. And even still, man, I be who I am at heart at all times. 
I'm very polite and humble with these people and I let them know at the same time, right in their face, don't mess with me because I'm not scared of you. I'm not someone you want to mess with, man. I tell them outright, man, I'm not looking for trouble. This place is already in trouble. How can you perceive me as a threat? That doesn't make any sense. It's time to think different, bro. Stop letting these people program your head and tell you what to do. Do you honestly think you were put here to do that? To only do what they tell you to do? Think about it, yo. These people are writing laws for you, yo, and they're in contracts with Satan, bro. They have formed allegiances with witches, bro. Because they were losing power. They had to find a way to gain their power back, bro. They had Beyonce stripping down naked, performing a ritual at a football game, bro. In front of everybody, man. Back during those days, during those days before they formed that pact with them, if they were seen out in the open doing with stuff like that, yo, what Beyonce was doing on that stage, I promise you, it would have been a wrap for her, yo. She would have been no more. People did not play games with that stuff, man, because we have, at this point, we have already seen uh, the Most High's wrath on these witches and these mages. It's been recorded throughout history. The Bible constantly tells you to stay away from magic and sorcery, bro. It tells you to stop putting presents in front of these trees. But yet, these people, every year on December 25th, they're putting presents underneath a tree, bro. And they're giving thanks. They don't even know who they're praying to. They're enjoying, the, they are feasting on a day that was not for them. They were paying homage to a tree, bro. And they have, they, they, people are doing that blindly now because they're now we're in an age where people are paying homage to this evergreen tree, but they don't know that's what they're doing. They don't know that uh, Christmas is the day of Osiris, basically. And the reason why I say that is because Osiris is the guy of vegetation. And what is vegetation? Plants, trees. The evergreen tree can live all year round. The leaves never wither. And they believe it was because of him. They, he, they, they gave thanks to the gods of the vegetation. That's where Christmas came from. They were offering, they weren't offering gifts to you, they were offering gifts to him. And they, they flipped it a little bit and said that this is the Lord giving gifts onto you, basically. This is the day of Christ, a.k.a. Tammuz. <laughs> that guy that you see, that's not, that is not the Messiah. That is a lie, bro. That is Tammuz, a demon. The man was a demon, bro. That's where that holiday comes from. They call it a magical occasion. He was also the god of witchcraft. What a surprise. What a coincidence, yo. This guy is the god of vegetation and witchcraft. What a coincidence, bro. Guess what? They made it a national holiday, bro. 
You don't have a choice but to observe it, man. You cannot do business on that day, even though, even if you know the truth about that holiday. They want to take all power from you. They want to steal your memories. They would take everything from you. And keep it for themselves. They want everything, bro. The, the greed never ends with these people. They want everything. Even the things that belong to you. A fat white guy in a red outfit coming down the chimney giving gifts sounds more believable than the most high to these people right now. They would even say this is Jesus' birthday, bro. These people blaspheming God, bro, so bad and they don't even know they're doing it, bro. So that's why I'm always polite and humble to people because they don't know what they do. But I also let them know, do not mess with me, bro. You don't want to be messing with me. Because not only am I not scared of you, I will actually fight you. If you're an enemy of the Most High, the Most High tells me to fight you, that is exactly what I would do. It's funny how the Most High uh, put things into my life. I started learning martial arts when I was 12 years old, and I did not want to learn martial arts. But like I said, man, during this time period, no, actually I was 11. During this time period, I kept getting in fights with other kids, like I said before. And my uncle was seeing that stuff, and not only that, I kept getting in fights with other kids, and I also had incredible accuracy with, like, throwing things. But I, my accuracy was, like, unreal, bro. Stuff you will only see on TV. So my uncle started seeing that stuff. My uncle is a third-degree black belt in kung fu. This dude is nothing nice, bro. You don't want to mess with him. My uncle, this is when my uncle, he, he started living with us. He actually moved into our house at this point in time because my uncle was homeless. And when he started living with us, he kept notice, he was noticing how I would throw things from like incredible distances, um, dense distances and I would hit these things, my target spot on even though I need glasses, I have bad eyes. And I was doing these things constantly. And then I would go outside and I would get into fights with other kids. So my uncle, my, when my uncle was seeing me do this stuff, uh, he, like everyone else, thought I was very mysterious. Uh, you never really see a little boy do these things like this. These things that I was doing. And I was real smart at school. And I was, I was an honorable student. It didn't make sense. <laughs> it didn't, okay? It didn't make sense. So. Sorry, I had to, I had to run across this road. This is a big road right here. So. My uncle was seeing me getting these fights with these other kids and stuff. And he started teaching me martial arts. I didn't want to learn martial arts, man. Uh, you know what I'm saying? If the way I felt, man, if I was around one of my enemies and they wanted to fight, we just going to fight right then and there, man. I ain't got time to be trying to learn martial arts. I just didn't have time. Like, I was I'm like, man, that's stuff you only see on TV, bro. I didn't believe none of that stuff was real, bro. To me, that was just, uh, <laughs> that's just like something you see Bruce Lee do on TV. It's not real because I've never seen people fight like that for real. Every person I fought, they didn't fight like Bruce Lee. They didn't know martial arts at all. So I felt like I didn't need it. So, 
and my uncle started making me learn martial arts, man. This was around the same time period where I met Siobhan. And I started hanging with her and she would come to my house and spend the night with my sisters. But she was actually my friend. She would come there to uh, see me because she, I actually introduced her to my sisters, but my mother did not know that. My mother thought that this was my, a friend of my sister's the whole time when she was not. She was actually my friend. I even spent the night, I, we pulled the same trick on her mother. I spent the night over at her house because her mother thought that I was her brother's friend and I never even met her brother before. I came over there and spent the night when they were having a birthday party because it was his birthday. His birthday was the same week as mine. What a coincidence, man. My birthday is a week after Siobhan's and me and her brother Tashine, his birthday was like on the 7th or something like that. His birthday was that same weekend. So my birthday had just passed and I went and spent the night over there with her. And I remember I had woke up that morning and she was standing over me, just looking at me, watching me while I was sleeping. And I sat up and I'm like, uh, what, what's wrong with you? What are you doing? I used to be real nervous around her. So she was real pretty, uh, gorgeous. And I had just met her like that week. We had only known each other for like a few days at this point. So I asked her, like, what are you doing? Like, why are you, uh, you know, like, why are you, like, standing over me like that? She was like, I want to dance. I was like, I'm like, yo, it's like 8 o'clock in the morning. What are you talking about? I want to eat breakfast. Like, yo, you got some cereal? I, I said something like that to her. I was hungry. So she went and turned the radio on, and she... The song started playing, it was a song by Elton John, I'll never forget it. And then she grabbed me by the arm, and I was like, yo, I really don't know how to dance, because I never danced with a girl before. I was like, and I'm hungry too, like, I don't, this is not going to work. She was like, yo, come on. She was like, come on, come on, please dance with me, I want, you, I want to dance with you. I'll teach you. So I let her teach me how they dance. That was the first time I ever danced with a girl. It's like 8 o'clock.